hi guys, I'm Back Tech, and welcome to episode three of the council. Um, last episode, we found out my mum's into some shifty. Sh uh, apparently, experimenting on Elizabeth uh, from birth, by the sounds of it, because um, apparently she was a stillborn. Uh, Mr. President George Washington, um, he's not going to like that. Like he was speaking very highly of my mum in episode one. And if he finds out that my mum was involved with her, uh, then he's gonna probably flip it. My mum seems to have, have a, like a really good reputation with everyone, like. Uh, but obviously, there's something going on in the background there that's a huge secret, and it's gonna come out. And George is not gonna be happy. George is not even happy with me at the moment because I didn't stall Elizabeth enough. But he's gonna have to get over it because she was in trouble. She needed help. So let's just go ahead and play. Saturn devouring his sun. Good God, how awful. Everything in this painting is disturbing. It's the first time I've seen brushstrokes like this. Mm-hmm. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. Okay. Um... Sure. I would like to speak about your master. Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else? You that could sir, say, I'd like, to like know? you know, he's a good bloke. Now you're just sus. <laughs> you can't even say something good about him. What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir, but I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps, sir, uh, would like to know something else? I want to know why you won't tell me anything. Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, sir can access the conference room which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. Really? From In the, the dining, dining room, room? Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, Sir should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Yeah, except for my mother. Has Sir uh, another question? Yeah, I do. But first, um, in my... Uh, my mum left me a little um, secret message in that book saying that I need to check upon the Medusa portrait of some form. So it's probably a good idea to go to the gallery at some stage. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? Toothbrush. I think that's the golden elixir, that one. Yeah. You wouldn't have a those. little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. Oh, goodness. I'm okay. Yeah, give me some. But that cost me three points, and a golden elixir. Oh. I'm not... I'm fine. I can find some around the manor. I don't need to use three points. It's all good, dude. It's all good. Oh, no. A fat bastard is here. I don't like him. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I 
hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister that of bastard. Business Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he <coughs> should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing it? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Thank you again for the vibe. I thought he was uh, Mortimer. It is served every day at the king's table. Obviously not. I am delighted to be here. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. <laughs> my friend. Oh, shit, shit. Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. <laughs> My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Be there. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> <laughs> Is the wine to your lucky? <laughs> Very much so. My guy's like, Gregory. what? Such complexity. <laughs> Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. Why is she touching herself? It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through in his hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Mm. <laughs> Get to know Walna, yeah. My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur... Louis Maurras de Richet. De Richet. De Richet. A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? Of course. I am just a simple French citizen. Really? Oh, you seem nothing like a commoner. <laughs> Especially compared to that wretch over there sharing our meal. Yeah. Didn't even have food on his fork. Uh -huh. Have you any information on this Napoleon? That's right. Well, what do you think, madam? What is this Bonaparte doing here? The presence of a soldier is never a good sign. It can only mean there's going to be further war. To answer your question, I only know that his family were in favor of the revolution, and that it almost cost them their lives. Thank you, that's helpful. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, dear. Mm. <laughs> 
Monsieur de Richer, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? <laughs> in private? Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. A word? You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Mm -hmm. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'or for 200 cannon. Difficulty 4. I suppose I haven't leveled up enough for that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you ought to speak to my mother. Oh, what a pity. I was hoping you would be up to the challenge. Too bad. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richer. I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Thanks. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met now you. Now let's go skydiving. No. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> Sorry, Eminem looked like a the slug last for a minute. <laughs> I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. All right, let's recap. Before dinner, 
I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. All right, Mum. All right, Eminem, what's up, doll? Well, Your Eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Volner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that Your Eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. Gets around. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. He's only but using me for my cannons. Have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing minutes but I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer do not worry it is typical of him what can I say Lord Mortimer is a very busy man I should think you are beginning to worry yeah well I, I must admit your eminence indeed it does worry me I understand but continue to have faith in Sarah You'll see, I'm sure. Also, are those boobies? Days, we'll all be laughing together. Fruit. That's all I hope for, Your Eminence. But while I have you with me, I, I have a question for you. Go ahead, Louis. What can do I do I? for you? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, no, let's not go that far. Let's just ask about a Medusa. As I haven't visited all the manor yet, I wondered if you hadn't seen a Medusa by any chance. I beg your pardon? <laughs> yes, La, La Gorgogne, the Medusa from Greek mythology. Would you have seen one in any shape or form? Not at all, my son. I'm not sure what you're getting at, but unfortunately, I, I'm not going to be of any use to you. Thank you anyway, Your Eminence. I won't take up any more of your time. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son. You know what? That to me is a strange thing to say. Instead of saying bye, just go like, I'll leave you to fight your demons. <laughs> it's Jesus! Where all eyes size you up. Chances are. That's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should she go and try to find the creature now? I'm gonna turn the uh, music down a little bit. <sighs> uh. Just cause it's really like, pissing me off. Much better. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The last day before his crucifixion, Jesus announces that he will be betrayed by one of his disciples. Hmm. Amber. <laughs> Amber. A meeting between Louis XIV and Philippe V. I wonder why Mortimer is particularly fond of this painting. All right, where's Snake Lady? Is that the Mortimer? Hmm. A painting with no name. Yeah, it's Mortimer's for show. It'd be funny if it turns out Mortimer's a chick. Ugh! Medusa! Wait. Let me, uh. Explore some steel. Devil's Thorn. I'll keep it. Lucky. <laughs> I 
All right, Medusa. I've got to find out what Mother was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword? Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Alright, I think I need to point them in the right direction. Maybe towards the painting with no name. Uh, I reckon uh, the, the uh, second half of the note that she left that I destroyed was going to tell me how to do this, so... That may be what that was. Okay. I don't think I... I think I just need to rotate them to face forward. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's already... Oops. It's facing Medusa now, so I believe if I get her to face the dude with the shield... Rotate the statue towards the hero holding the shield. Okay, and this guy... Face Medusa. <coughs> I'm just gonna um towards the dude holding the sword. Oh, you know what? This I'm not using any logic. <laughs> and I bet you this is supposed to be the door here. The origin of myths, a reinterpretation of legendary creatures. Just what I need. The text is in French on the left-hand page and in Latin on the right hand. Let's find the chapter on the Medusa. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the Gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. Okay. Okay, let's try that, shall we? Let's think. To vanquish the beast, the statues have to be lined up in a specific order. What can the shield be for? To protect its holder? Why not? But in that case, what's the lantern for? Step back and take a second, Louis. Be logical, but open-minded. Think outside the box. Nobody said a statue has to have only one use. I wonder if the lantern was to distract the Medusa. This shield can both protect the holder and also reflect the light from the lantern to distract the beast. In other words, Mm. I'll have to make an angle of 90 degrees between the lantern and the Medusa by turning the shield to face the sword. If Mortimer's the one who thought of all this stuff, then honestly, he must have a screw loose. Crazy idea, but worth a shot. Okay, so the shield needs to face the sword, the lantern needs to face the shield. Got it. Boom. Whoa. Mom. Ah, no, you're not, For Pete's sake, Emily. 
You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. Oh, yeah? So tell me what you're doing here. I'm just... I mean, I... Yeah, just like me. Probably, but I asked the question first. Well, then, we'll pretend you haven't asked me yet. What about a little gallantry, Louis? Come on, I'm listening. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Shh. Oh, man. Listen, this isn't one of Madame Scudery's soirees. There's no room for courtesy in a place like this. I promise in any other circumstances, I would try to show a bit more spirit in my efforts to amuse you. For today, I suggest we focus on the rather obvious fact that we are both interested in spying on our host. I congratulate you on your knowledge of fashionable soiree of the 12th century, but you have just ruined the ambiance, Louis. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh, yeah. In your dreams. At your service, madam. I found something! <laughs> the heavenly symbols refer to Pandora's box. Emily, I'm pretty sure I've got Pandora's box. Of course you have. You see an earthen pot and you immediately assume it can only be Pandora's box. Logical. Oh. What I like about you, Louis, is that you never fail to surprise me. Uh, I'm opening it. Emily, what if I open the jar? Would that then make man responsible for all the evils? Try. It'll make a change. <laughs> All right, can we move on now? I do love your irony, but honestly, are you ever impressed by anything you see? By a chamber pot? No, you really do need to do better than that. Stop flirting. A golden fleece. It's freezing. Hurry up. Put some clothes on. Cold? Yeah. You want a rug? It'll warm you up. I wouldn't be caught dead in that horrible thing. Don't complain about That's being a pity. cold. The gold color brings out your eyes. And your flattery brings out your boorishness. An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three. Oh, I'm gonna... The Gospel According to Judas, She's or irritating me. How to Crucify Jesus as Part of God's Plan. You do realize that the contents of this book could undermine the very foundations of Christianity. One more reason to leave it in the secret room of a lost manor on a private island. Do you realize how important this book is? Of course, but what I really want to know is how did it come into Mortimer's possession? I was thinking the same thing about all the paintings and sculptures in the manor. That's not a knife. Hey, Mortimer is the author of this work. It talks about his passion for art. Hmm? You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. Brass quillins and knobs. A beautiful cruciform line. Judging by the wear and the technique used to forge it, this sword dates back to the Crusades, and it must have belonged to a wealthy knight. There's a date. NCXC. 1190. That's right. Forge for the Crusades. Mm. I think this is Excalibur, King Arthur's sword. I've 
always dreamt of drawing it from the stone. How sweet. You're still clinging to your boyhood dreams. When you finish playing, maybe you can help me search the place? Excuse me, girlfriend. You've only been, like, in the one spot the whole time. Guess what I found. The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's laurel wreath. Uh, I was going to say Jesus's crown. My bad. <laughs> the workmanship I don't know. Crown is I can see it now, though. <laughs> the nest of the gold laurel leaves is beautiful. A crown worthy of an emperor. I'd stake my life that it's the genuine article. Oh my god, yes. Yes, try it on. Stop, don't put your grubby fuck fingers on it. You find my you. fingers fat? <laughs> At least put on some gloves. Please note, my fingers are slim. You were going to leave marks. My god, what an amateur. Many a harpsichord player would love to have sexy fingers like mine. Tell me where you took your infiltration classes so I can have your tutor executed. Let's compare hands then. We'll soon see whose fingers are fattest. <laughs> No, I'm not going to compare hands with you. Let's just keep going. Bad loser. <laughs> Bad loser. <sighs> Let's compare hands. Amber crystals. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine. Hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia. Properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old, and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? See those fine scratches around the words? Yes, and? The ink barely spreads on the paper. It spreads exactly the same way on the signature. The deed was written using the same ink. If it is a fake, then it's a professional job. That's how you pro. That's how you pro. Uh, that's how you impress a lady. Yeah, I'm gonna assume it's false. <laughs> she more and more than mortal. <laughs> These documents must be fakes. No man can own that many original works, no matter how rich he is. Be careful. The Order has tried many times to estimate his personal wealth without ever succeeding. And look here. Castles in Scotland, vineyards in Italy, districts in Venice. He's richer than some European countries. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know. I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So... Do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Why keep such a collection hidden in a secret room? Any thoughts? Mortimer has every reason in the world to conceal it, even if only to keep it from people like us. Hey, Emily, we're not thieves. We're only looking. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? Because I love you. Oh, well, shit, what are immunities? I forget, I forget. Display immunities. Ooh. 
When are you going to understand? Oh, vulnerability! I just want to help you. Shit! What do you expect? That I'll fall into your arms and say yes to everything? I'm so stupid. What are you talking about? I'm only asking you to trust me a little. If only on principle, as a member of the Golden Order, for example. Oh, what? what? You're what? fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to I thought it meant comes to choosing that was genes. my vulnerability. Nothing to gain by confiding it's in hers. Oh my god. I am terrible. Gain? Damn it, Emily. I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha. Huh. And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, shit. Let me get some points. Get some points. Yeah. Pragmatic, intelligent, sure of herself. Her only weak spot is her difficulty talking about herself. I don't know much about your past, but I'm guessing you had to get by on your own for much of your life. Mm. It might have closed you off, and that can be a disadvantage. It might be time for you to open up and risk a little trust. Not every man you meet wants to hurt you. Hmm. Yes, you may be right. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Okay. Run out of points for you guys. I might save them for the last one. Uh. Oh, it's crystal clear. You don't like people telling you what to do, and you do like giving the orders to everyone. If I were the matron you speak of, I would have found an underling to search this place, and I would be sound asleep in my bed. Oops. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me. But I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? It's George. No, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler, so... Your partner is... Yeah, the the Golden Order is, um, George is in that. I'm gonna say. And, and she's associated with my mum and she's a member, like, sorry, she's the French leader of the Golden Order. I'm gonna say Chances that. are, you're working with a member of the Order. The only members of the Order, other than ourselves, are your mother and Mr. Washington. The former has sadly gone missing. As for the latter, I knew nothing of his arrival. Mm. Incidentally, you must have noticed how inefficiently our order communicates internationally. Oh, crap. I haven't heard her mention any other ladies. And the only other person I've heard her mention is her, her husband. That she said he's like sick of the politics or something so I don't think he'd be involved in any of this I don't know and I haven't yeah I haven't heard anything about her dad lucky this isn't timed <laughs> you know what I'm just gonna choose her husband your husband of course my husband he can't even walk without a cane poor old man let him live out the rest of his days in peace how nice for him. What? Well, her... No. It's your... It's me mom! I didn't see that. <laughs> I'm so stupid. It's as obvious as it is surprising. You're my mother's hard-hitting partner. Oh, God. Do you really believe the nonsense that comes out of your mouth? Well, a second ago I did. A little. Sorry, Louis. Your mother is not my partner. Right, time is short. You haven't convinced me. I prefer to remain discreet. Don't take it the wrong way. 
All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. And if I reacted so strongly at the sight of the cameo pendant, it's because I thought it belonged to her. But it doesn't. I understand. I won't insist. It's time to leave. Shit. I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here. Oh, What's she's up? been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please, don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. You, you, what the? What? I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now. Otherwise, it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but... If I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should yeah, I do? Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Emily, you are not seducing me today. Excuse me. Elizabeth, oh shit! I some very urgent business has cropped up. I we pressed the tomorrow. wrong one. No, Louis, don't leave me alone. They've come back. Good night, madam. Oh no. But I don't. Oh well, my god, oh my god, oh my god. You took your sweet time. What did our poor Elizabeth want? No, oh, I want to go back. Can I go back? Can I go back? The truth is, I really don't have the slightest idea. But I thought all of that could wait until tomorrow. That young girl seems very. Emily? Have I misunderstood something here? What are you doing in my room? And for a while now. The question has been nagging at me. And that explains why I now find you here in my bed. Go ahead. <laughs> ask me the question that's been burning at your lips. I know your mother was here to meet someone, but I can't figure out who. Oh, so that's what's been hiding behind all this. We are both members of the Order, Louis. Let's try to be honest with each other. I have followed with great interest your affair in Paris, in connection with Mr. Von Borschert. You managed to steal something from him, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I can't do anything Are else. Are you talking about the Book of All Mysteries? Oh, uh, yes, the beginning of the, uh, right, the game. A valuable bit of plunder, isn't it? Yeah. When we finally found it, we took it. And where is the book right now? Amazingly, it's right here. Mother took it with her when she came. This is quite fascinating. Mm -mm. But just what did Sarah expect to accomplish here? If only I knew myself. My mother always takes a sly pleasure in telling me as little as possible. Oh, poor little Louis. Your mother hides things from you. That's not very nice. No, it's not nice at all. And you, what were you supposed to do once the book was found? Give it to our sponsor, of course. Sir Gregory has more than one card up his sleeve. So you mean home is playing both sides? Right. Enough chatting. Come and join me instead. Hmm. Well, I can't waste the opportunity. It was a mistake. Let's just go with it. Oh. <laughs> uh. Okay, well, that happened. I have to go, Louis. I don't want anyone finding me here in the morning. You're right. Well, have a good night. Good night. See you tomorrow, rested and ready. Sure thing. Sleep with my wife. I'll beat you with my cane. Am I in trouble? 
Nah. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one there. <laughs> I think I went for a, a little bit longer than I usually do, so, ooh. Uh, so, uh, yeah, accidents happen. Just remember that, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.